Prior to installing Hunter fans, mark off the work area and make sure the breaker is on and all lockout tagout procedures are followed. Adjusting the down rod. Hunter pre-wires all down rods, allowing for a plug and play installation. The Hunter adjustable down rod ships from the factory in the shortest configuration, but if a longer length of the down rod is necessary for the application, adjust the down rod at the ground level before installing to the building structure. To adjust the down rod, remove the two adjustment bolts and hardware. Slide the upper and lower tubes apart until the matching pair of adjustment holes line up to achieve the desired length. Take care not to extend the down rod beyond the warning label. Replace the two adjustment bolts and hardware. Turn the adjustment bolts clockwise to 53.8 foot-pounds until bolts are tightly secured. Down rod mounting. To prepare the down rod for mounting, align the shims between the mounting plate and beam clamp using the hardware provided. For wider beams, use the outermost access slots. Place the clamp on one side of the structure. Tighten the hardware until the mount is secure. It should still be able to move slightly. Assemble the other shim and tighten it to the structure. I-beam mounting. Center the mount under the structure, making sure the clamps have maximum coverage on both sides. Then, tighten the hardware completely. Retention Safety Cable Wrap the retention cable from the down rod around the beam or building structure. Ensure the retention cable length is shorter than the power cable at the motor connection. Leave about 3 inches of slack in the wire and cable at the top of the down rod opening. Coil the excess cable and secure with the provided clamps. Motor installation. Hunter's direct drive motor is not only efficient, but light enough in weight an individual can move it. Be careful when removing the motor from its packaging. Do not lift the motor from the motor power cable. Line up the holes from the retention cable into the fork. Insert the clevis pin into the retention rod and secure it with the provided clip. Connect the plug from the motor and the down rod. Twist the connector to lock. Remove nylon lock nuts from studs for motor assembly. Lift the motor assembly while feeding the studs through the down rod flange. Gently feed the excess wire and cable through the top of the down rod. Be sure not to pinch the cable between the motor and the down rod flange. Secure each stud with the nylon lock nuts. Guy wire installation. Begin by loosely placing the provided gripple bolts into all four gripples. Measure to ensure equal distance between the beam claps and fan. Attach the beam claps to the structure and tighten. After the beam claps are tightly secured to the building structure, clip the 15-foot guy wire end to the beam clap. Thread the 15-foot guy wire cable through one end of the gripple until a few inches protrude to the opposite end. Clip the end of the 2-foot guy wire to the eye bolt of the turnbuckle. Feed the opposite end of the 2-foot guy wire through the same gripple as the 15-foot guy wire. Hook the turnbuckle to the down rod disc. Tighten each turnbuckle by end in a crisscross pattern. Repeat this process for the remaining guy wires. Place a magnetic post level against the down rod, periodically ensuring the down rod is plumb with no slack in the guy wires and the down rod is fully stable, allowing for close to a 45 degree angle of the guy wire. Tighten each set screw on the turnbuckles. Trim any excess cable from the guy wires and then tighten the gripple bolts. Eco and XP blades. Remove nylon lock nuts before installing blade. With the numbers on the blade holder facing up, Insert the press studs through the holes in the blade holder. 
hand screw the nylon lock nuts onto the press studs to hold it in place. Tighten the nylon lock nuts on the press studs using the 19mm wrench or socket. Repeat for the remaining plates. VFD Prep the variable frequency drive for mounting to the structure. VFD hardware is not included and mounting methods may vary. Mount the VFD directly above the fan. Position the VFD with the plug connector panel facing down. Connect the motor cable from the fan to the VFD, being careful to align the pins within the connector before performing a clockwise twist to lock in place. Connect the Ethernet communication cable to port COM1. Run the other side of the communication cable to the HMI. Plug the VFD power whip to the appropriate power receptacle and twist clockwise to lock. HMI touchscreen controls, 350 series controller. Using the provided mounting bracket, screw the mounting bracket to back of the HMI controller. Ensure the Ethernet communication cable from the lead drive is connected to the HMI controller. Secure the HMI controller to any convenient location 